So welcome back guys. Uh, today in this case discussion, this is OPD case discussion number seven. Now, as you can see on the screen, this is a CT scan PNS of a patient aged 17 years who had come to my OPD with complaints of right-sided frontal headache. Now, the frontal headache was intermittent uh, in nature more since a period of six to eight months and which was more prominent on bending forward he had recurrent episodes of nasal stuffiness with a uh, patient being known case of allergic to you know the dust and the particulate matter uh, the environment so the patient also had a feeling of heaviness over his maxillary cheek area but more on the frontal and also patient had uh, the eye pain because of exertional uh, situation the patient being a student and constant reading and digital platform study etc so all these matter uh, comes to play in the patient's history so the main point was that the patient was having recurrent uh, episodes of nasal stuffiness and uh, right frontal headache the patient did not have any pain on the left side in the frontal region or anywhere on the left side of the face now the patient already had done his CT scan and as you can see on the screen this CT scan is basically of a 2mm CT scan now there's an important point whenever you order a CT scan for the radiologist you have to be very specific for your details the scan should be around 0.5 1mm in thickness to know the anatomy in detail it should never be around more than 1mm to have a good study and the second thing, uh, all the three sections should be available. As you can see, this is we have a coronal section in front of us. We also have a sagittal section and we also have an axial section for the complete 3D study of this patient. We can also orient this on the same screen. We can have the patient's 3D platform. We also can have the patient's 3D orientation, as you can see over here. We can study the patient's CT scan in three different directions at the same time to have a better orientation. So always ask for the radiologist uh, to give you a DVD so that you can study the, the digital platform of the patient's CT scan. Now, coming on the patient's CT scan, if you go from the most anterior aspect to the most posterior aspect, you can see this is a patient's left frontal sinus and thus being the patient's right frontal sinus being dominant in nature. And as you can see, the patient's right frontal sinus is really huge. With this is the interfrontal sinus septum being pushed on towards the left side. And completely, the right frontal sinus is full of opacification. And you can see this is a patient's frontonasal process over here. And that's the nasal bone. And that's the frontal bone over here. Uh, so if we keep on going behind, we can start seeing the maxillary set of teeth and the, uh, the mandibular set of teeth over here, the frontonasal process of maxilla elongation, and you can see the complete table of the frontal sinus, the frontal bone over here, but still the right frontal sinus being completely opacified. Now, as you can see, the letter M over here is still intact, or you can say the inverted letter W, it's still intact, so that is the uh, frontal beak. Uh, and still this is the region of the frontal sinus now as soon as we go behind and when the patient's uh, the m shape or the inverted w shape gets distorted or uh, the floor of the frontal sinus disappears like this we can conclude that this patient's frontal sinus has ended and the frontal recess has started over here now as you can see the patient's right frontal was huge and full of opacification. That was the reason for the patient having a right side frontal headache. But since a long time, since around six to eight months, and uh, the patient was given just tablet uh, Montelukast and Levocetirizine and some local steroidal spray, but the patient did not have a good follow-up on the treatment and the CT scan was showing this much of collection. Uh, also, you can see the right side nasal cavity is fully opacified with a little minimal gap in the inferior meatal region. And throughout the patient's right nasal cavity, if you can see from the anterior as we go posteriorly, we can see opacification in the patient's complete right side nasal passage up till the coronal region. We can see still the patient has a lot of opacification over here. So that, that suggests that the patient has a lot of thick mucoid discharge uh, in the frontal sinus and 
pouring up into the right nasal cavity but uh, the left nasal cavity seemed to be completely normal even the patient did not have the inferior turbinate hypertrophy as you can see this is this you will not call as a turbinate hypertrophy for sure so these are the basic pathological findings which you can see in this uh, patient city scan with uh, now the main concern should be to look for the origin and the extent of the uh, the frontal sinusitis along with the right nasal sinusitis and any other anatomical abnormality in this patient. Now the patient's bilateral maxillary sinus also shows minimal mucosal hypertrophy and you can see a small retention cyst in the patient's right maxillary region. Uh, though may sometimes people may confuse this with a dentigar cyst but that is not possible because you cannot see any impacted tooth or a hyper intensity just like this over here in this swelling now sometimes dentigar cyst now i've had a case of dentigar cyst uh, which i'll come up with my next series of opd discussions where i'll show the exact differentiation of a retention cyst from the dentigar cyst where you can see an actual tooth which has been impacted and uninterrupted tooth uh, in the cyst in the maxillary sinus so rest of the patient's detailed anatomy is completely normal the lamina papyracea is intact it is not eroded the skull base is also intact the cribriform plate the crista gili is completely intact the patient has a normal anterior ethmoidal skull base and as we keep on going posteriorly, the patient's skull base becomes more horizontal. That is the posterior ethmoidal skull base. Uh, now, all the basics in reading the CT scan I have dealt with in my previous lectures. So, I'm just going to discuss the important points in this CT scan. And the main concern of this patient as I was studying this patient's CT scan was that I could, I could see that the patient had a different finding in his spinoid sinus. Now, as you can see now... Uh, as we go from the front, we can see a uh, continuous from this is the uh, area on the right and this is the area on the left. This is a continuous bone over here, but as we as we go behind posteriorly, you can see there's a there's a discontinuation in the bony lining, and here we can see the lesser ring of spinoid, and this is the anterior clinoid process. We can see over here this is the optic nerve impression, that's the carotid artery impression, that's the cavernous sinus over here and we can see the spinoid sinus has started but there's a huge huge appearance in this uh, spinoid sinus is that this patient has only cell uh, on both the sides this patient has a huge only cell which you can see on the very top now this is a very confusing thing if you are a beginner or do not know much about the anatomy of the spinoid sinus now whenever in the spinoid sinus we have one vertical as you can see over here, this is a vertical inter sinus septa. But if the spinoid sinus is completely normal, we have this entire spinoid sinus and we would ha be having a normal vertical uh, inter sinus septa just like here. But this area is completely free of any septa and you can see a septa over here in the below region over here. So what I can assume is that this is the only cell which is in the top region completely pushing the actual main spinoid sinus below and compressing it so that the optic nerve on both the sides is opening up into the only cell above. So this is a very rare presentation I came up with in my long years of practice is that this only cell is completely above the normal spinoid sinus and pushing the normal spinoid and shrinking it into half size. Now, if I keep on going posteriorly, you can see this is the only cell over here. And this is one more intra right sided intra spinoidal septation over here. And you can see the impression of the nerve over here uh, and the nerve over here. So this, this is the Vidian canal over here. This hole over here is the Vidian canal. And this over here is the, teri or the V2 canal. That's the foramen rotundum. Okay, so that is the two openings which you can see medial is Vidian and lateral is V2. So as we still keep on going behind, we can still see that this only cell then completely disappears and that's the main right side spinoid and that's the left side spinoid. Now, some people may still find this very confusing on the coronal section. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a 3D orientation. 
so i'm gonna i'm gonna show you a uh, multi-planar orientation over here i'm just gonna zoom this up and uh, so i'm gonna i'm gonna do i'm gonna just uh, localize the uh, spinoid sinus first of all and then keep my cursor at the ornery cell now so as you can see over here my cursor is in the center of the ornery cell and on the sagittal section you can see this is the ornery cell which is labeled above and this is the actual spinoid sinus which is below so on the axial section also you can see if i can just uh, if i can just zoom this out you can actually see that the spinoid sinus is here but normally in the if only you are given the axial section this would be appearing as a spinoid sinus but we have kept this orientation in the ornery cell and you can see this huge ornery cell which is at a level above superior to the spinoid sinus so if i keep this cursor in the right spinoid now you can see on the axial section we can see the right spinoid over here we can see the right spinoid over here and that's the left spinoid and on the sagittal section, we can see the spinoid, which is at a level below. So in this case, we have a tremendously huge ornery cell. And how to identify is that we need to locate the horizontal septations over here. Now, the main reason, uh, as you can see over here, if I can just go back a little bit. Now, normally a normal spinoid sinus wouldn't be having any horizontal septations like this. It has only a single vertical septation dividing the two, uh, dividing the cavity in two. Okay, so the right and the left. But this, you can see there's a presence of the horizontal septation on both sides. And that is a very rare finding I could see in the CT scan of this patient is that this is a common huge only cell occupying the entire superior half of both the spinoid sinuses as in total. So you, what you do in your surgery is that you open up the right spinoid, you open up the left spinoid, but then you appear that by, by intraoperatively, it will appear to be as very small. But then you have to break the superior septa. If you have a 3D navigation system, it's very you know effective. But uh, in, in life surgery, one may be really confused if he opens up into the right spinoid, he will see uh, this horizontal septation and would consider this as the planum spinoidale. But no, that would not be the planum spinoidale, it would be just a horizontal septation in both cases. So you have to break it and if, now in this patient, there's no need to break because the spinoid sinus is completely normal and there is no opacification or any collection. Had there been any collection over here in the superior cell, that's the ornery cell, the surgeon would have had to go through this uh, superior, that horizontal uh, septation, break the horizontal septation with, uh, you know, with careful, uh, with care and then remove the opacification from the superior ornery cell and make the sinus as one common cavity on right and left side. So that is that is the main issue, main uh, aim over here. So this is how you basically identify the case of ornery cells and uh, basically which is nothing but the persistent posterior most ethmoid cell which is you know projecting the spinoid sinus downwards. So and these are the two prominent projections of the two canals that's this is the mag this is the maxillary nerve that's the v2 that's the foramen rotundum and this is the uh, the vidian canal vidian which is always uh, median and these are the two pterygoid plates and we can you can see foramen oval somewhere around here yeah this one is the foramen oval the discontinuation over here for the mandibular nerve origin so this is how I could see this patient's uh, different CT scan findings and I chose to show it to you guys on my YouTube channel. So what I did, I started the patient on treatment such as uh, I, I started giving the patient a local steroidal nasal spray called as Floresp AZ which consists of fluticasone furate with azelastine, which is the best combination steroidal which exists today in the, in the allergic treatment. Uh, this is to be taken one puff BD twice a day and for 15 days to maximum one month along with steam inhalation and avoidance of all sorts of pollen and dust. 
and along with this you give the patient mucus nasal drop any any xylometazolin nasal drops to clear the congestion and steam again and you can give the patient on tablet uh, montelukast levocetrazine or montelukast with fexofenadine twice a day for 15 days to max one month now you got to avoid the patient on tablet steroids because steroid tablets though are safe for a very short period of time say for example 7 to 15 days in tapering doses but beyond that it is never safe for a patient of this low caliber of sinusitis to be started on tablet steroids. I always avoid tablet steroids unless it's a huge severe case of allergic polyposis to be taken for operation. So uh, this is my treatment. Now the patient will have a follow up after one month and then maybe on the symptomatic uh, comparison if the patient feels very good and a re huge relief. I may continue my treatment for 15 more days. But after that, if the, say, if the symptoms appear, I may take the patient for surgery, uh, an isolated surgery for right-sided frontal sinusitis. So I'm going to do, I'm going to widen up the frontal sinus opening and I'm, clear the, I'm going to clear the frontal sinus of this patient uh, and make it wide so that in future it does not collect and does not cause any recurrent infections. So this is how you study the patient's CT scan and look for the anatomical variations. And uh, this concludes my uh, seventh case in OPD case discussions. I'll, be, I'll keep coming up with a lot of uh, more interesting cases, more interesting surgical cases. Now I have a lot of surgeries lined up. I also need to show you guys the basic new advanced surgical techniques in inferior turbinate uh, turbinoplasty, which can be done endoscopically with the help of a micro debrider. It's a procedure similar to the submucous resection of the mucus uh, turbinate. So it's a very effective treatment for reducing the size of the inferior turbinate in patients of allergic rhinitis. Also, I can show you the procedure of you know, severing the nerve supply, which can decrease the nasal secretions in severe cases of allergic rhinitis patients. So a lot of, lot of surgical cases pending and coming up in future. So stay tuned to my channel. And uh, if you have any doubts, you can just let me know on my Facebook and Instagram page. Or you can just leave a comment down below there. So till then, guys, take care. See you next time.